We're in downtown Los Angeles. There's a uh, protest or slash rally here on the uh, southbound 110 freeway. This is for a permanent ceasefire in Israel. Now, you can see that line of folks out there, and they've basically shut down. Not basically. They have completely shut down the 110 freeway out here in downtown Los Angeles, right about 3rd Street. Now, the uh, California Highway Patrol, they're there, and they were basically keeping an eye on it. But the uh, drivers, well, this is Los Angeles. And stopping the 110 freeway, tempers are starting to flare down there. There, you can see a lot of um, emotion starting to explode. We actually saw a couple of fist fights just take place. The folks down there that are doing the protest, you can see them. They've got their arms locked. They've got the freeway completely shut down. But you can also see that the drivers out here, some motorcyclists and, and also uh, just vehicle drivers, getting a little frustrated and starting to push these folks around to get the freeway flowing again. Now, the California Highway Patrol, they've taken a passive stance on this. You know what? I'm keeping my opinions out of it. But you can see what is going on. The drivers, they are just not having any part of it this morning. The backup as I understand it. This has been going on for more than a few minutes out here. That backup, take a look at that. That's the 110 through downtown Los Angeles. The backup all the way to the 5 freeway right now, a complete standstill. A lot of folks getting out of their cars, coming up to the front, and displaying their dissatisfaction about this situation. Now, we haven't seen anybody taken away in an ambulance as of yet, but we did see a physical altercation, at least one real fist fight that just broke out moments ago. Some of those motorcyclists just pushing their way through the lines, but as far as the cars go, right now, California Highway Patrol, they're there on scene, but you can see the emotions flaring right there. These are drivers. They're just trying to get to work, just trying to do their daily business while this protest is going on. Again, trying to stay out of it, but this is one of those situations where no matter how right or wrong your protest is, shutting down a freeway, not a good idea. I'm Stu up in Skyvox. Back to y'all. Stu, we're going to stay with you here. I'm trying to read what it says on the some of the sweatshirts and shirts that these protesters have on. Do you see, do you have a better vantage point? It says permanent ceasefire there, equality, justice, safety for all on that sign. But on their shirts... Not I have, you know, in, I, they move around so quickly, but it, not let's in see, our we, name. Ceasefire. Not yeah, in our name. Ceasefire now. Yeah, not in our name. That's what that's what the shirts are saying. That's probably the name of the group out there. But you can see that line uh, basically just just shutting down the entire freeway. How they got that accomplished? That's something that I, I we weren't here when that was happening. But you can see the tempers flaring there. You still see a bunch of uh, folks. These are people that are getting out of their cars, coming over here to get the uh, protesters to get up and get out of the way. California Highway Patrol seriously outnumbered. But again, you got to understand that these. Are this is law enforcement. I'm not sure why or how. Again, trying to stay out of it, just calling it as we see it. Not sure why they're allowing this again. And, and this is shutting down the entire southbound 110 freeway in the downtown Los Angeles area. Again, the people that they're holding up are the ones that are where the tempers are starting to flare. Somebody just throwing some water on some of those protesters. But again, it, this is going to be going on till these people get off the freeway safely. And how they're going to do that, when they're going to do that, it's a tough one to say right now. A lot of people watching this may be wondering why CHP officers, law enforcement can't just go in there and remove these protesters off the 110. <laughs> Obviously, that is a big deal and it's an issue of freedom of speech. And you see those people in the neon hats, those baseball hats, those are usually legal monitors who are out on the scene of a protest with a lot of organizations to make sure that laws are being followed and that uh, they are writing down everything that's going on and describing things as they're happening. So there are legal eyes on the scene right there as well. And we see this often in these types of protests uh, so that later on, should things get out of hand or should legal matters need to be necessary because of perhaps any arrests being made, they also have a historical account of what exactly happened. They're kind of neutral observers. But you see those protesters locking arms definitely shutting down the freeway and you could just imagine those motorists and the backup that's continuing on the 110 Stu. 
Yeah, that backup is huge out here. We heard actually a California Highway Patrol officer call it in just moments ago before we arrived. They said the backup is solid all the way to the 5 freeway. I'm wondering if he is caught in that. Maybe he was responding to that. They Well, there you go. You can see they actually have created brakes right now. They're pushing people off onto the 101. They, so they're not allowing any extra traffic to build up here. So that's their plan right now. So if the 110 from the 5 or from the south from the 5 or through the downtown Los Angeles is part of your drive, this morning I would avoid it as long as possible because again we don't know how long this is going to be going on but I can tell you right now tempers definitely flaring as some of these drivers making their way up to the front expressing their opinions on this uh, on this shutdown but as it's as we as it stands we haven't seen anybody seriously injured we haven't seen anybody going into custody and again California Highway Patrol they are here but they are right this moment just allowing this to go on and you can see that uh, that it you know again we just report the news it, you know if it is something that it, you know we all stand for we're all about it the way they're presenting it is not the way that I personally would do it seeing how they're shutting down that freeway they're disrupting so many people out there somebody might lose their job over this so this is a big deal for a lot of folks out there and it is definitely a problem for the public you see some school buses in fact caught up in that traffic it looks like so I hope that some children aren't stuck on those school buses as this all gets figured out you see the driver right there or one one of the drivers talking to somebody inside that school bus but you know hopefully it's not a scary situation or experience for those kids in there being stuck in this major traffic jam so I'm getting some information yeah. here as to who this group is um, it they did they did put out actually a press release with some information prior to this happening so this is uh, American Jews and allies connected with if not now LA as American Jews who they're saying we're refusing to be silent according to this uh, press release um, they are demanding an end to the financial support of Israel's um, occupation and what they're calling war crimes I just want to make it clear this is from their words and they're talking about how 18,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been forced to forced to be displaced, how the food and water is scarce in the region, how, uh, you know, people are dying, people are injured, and they want an end to this. That's probably why we're seeing those shirts that say, not in our name, meaning that although they are Jewish um, descent, of Jewish descent, they, they don't want their name being used to uh, back this war currently happening in Gaza. Um, so this began just a little bit ago, and I'm wondering how, you know, it, it's such a dangerous thing, obviously, to be on the freeway. Uh, initially, before you shut it down, how you even go about that process. How you even shut it down. Yeah, how do you even yeah, go about that it, process? It's just uh, so scary, actually, and so dangerous. And looks like no one uh, that we know, at least, of was hurt. But now they're sitting there, and it's frustrating for everyone else, who obviously traffic is building up. They have places to go. They have jobs. They have things to do. It's understandable people are frustrated. Some people in the way back probably don't even know what's going on. But, you know, we see this often where groups who feel like their voices aren't heard, they feel as though this is a way to get the attention, which mm. clearly they did, right? And now we're talking about it right now on the news. Yeah. But at the same time, well, even though they're trying to get their message out there, they're angering people who are impacted by this and may not have a favorable reaction to all of this. So I, I, I wonder, you know, if this is productive or counterproductive at this point. Uh, those are the big questions that uh, for sure and you you know these are same things that maybe Ella could come up with or we could talk to him about he's the, he's our political expert for sure but uh, what I can tell you is that tempers really started to flare just before we went live there was an actual uh, fist fight there were a number of motorcycles you know how the motorcycles make their way up to the front of the pack and there were a bunch of motorcyclists out there and when it's when it started becoming a little bit hectic they just started pushing their way through uh, we didn't see any injuries. That might have been what that one person was talking to, this person right here. I was wondering maybe that's what they're talking to these uh, protesters about, asking them if they're okay, because there was uh, some physical uh, altercation going on, especially in that front, well, right there, where the in the center of the screen. Uh, those motorcyclists were uh, pushing their way through and just basically just using their bikes to push their way through that uh, crowd. Uh, but uh, right now, you can still see a number of people out of their cars. You 
you can see, uh, you just read the body language, not happy about the situation. But again, California Highway Patrol, I'm sure they're saying, up oh, there they are, and they've got the wire ties out. So they are going to start taking these folks into custody one by one. I'm sure they're probably telling the uh, drivers to get back into their vehicles because I'm sure as soon as they start moving them off of the freeway, they're going to start uh, opening up that freeway, so they want all the drivers back into their cars. But again, you can see it right there, and boy, they got a number of those wire ties. So, so they're they're going to start taking these uh, folks into custody. And uh, my pilot telling me that there's more police cars arriving, or California Highway Patrol officers arriving. So maybe that's what they were waiting for. They were just waiting to get these uh, backup officers here because they didn't have a way to move or transport all these uh, protesters that are going to be taken into custody. But that process just getting underway, and again, we've seen this in the past. This probably is not going to happen very quickly. They're going to talk to each one of the protesters and uh, give them the opportunity to maybe walk away from all this and or go into custody. They're going to read them their rights. So this is going to be a slow-moving process, but it's definitely a step, as I would say, in the right direction. I'm not saying I'm uh, for or against what they're protesting down there, but uh, definitely to get the freeway open again, this is a step in the right direction. It looks like everyone, uh, from what I can see, at least they're complying. It's like they know they're coming to uh, not take them into custody, but basically zip tie their hands. So they're getting up, they're turning around. Uh, for the most part so far, it seems like everyone uh, down below is complying. Yep, they seem to be complying. We don't see any any resistance, and, and I'm sure this was part of the issue, and that might have been what that the, the legal, like you were talking about, the, the, the legal ease people right there, and then also that one uh, person from the group was talking to each one of these, uh, this guy right here was talking to each one of these uh, uh, individuals probably telling them this is what the process is going to be they're going to they're going to wire tie you they're going to take you into custody and you know and maybe they have a plan for how to get them out afterwards but right now this is a, a positive note for the drivers as they're starting to take uh, these uh, protesters into custody it'll still take some time to remove all of those individuals that are sitting across the freeway right there and keep in mind even if the individuals are not lined up across the freeway the chp cars are behind that in the shot you see so those have to move out of the way before even one lane can reopen on the 110 and there you see the first couple protesters being put into a patrol car and then they will be taken in to get processed. But how's the backup looking now? Were they some cars able to reverse? Because I know in some situations, CHP makes modifications and are allowing drivers to go the other direction, but it doesn't look like the case at this point. Wow. Does do doesn't look like yeah it doesn't look like that's happening today maybe a couple of them there you go the, you know it is california we we know we know our drivers we know how we are out here we need to be where we need to be and i think you are right you're totally right sandra they you can see the officers you got a couple of california Air patrol officers down there uh just kind of controlling it saying you know okay you can make a you can make a u-turn you can come up this way and then make your way onto the 101 that seems to be the plan right now so they are starting to alleviate all of that traffic you know our First responders, California Highway Patrol, is, is Central Division, these guys, you know, you got to love them. They, def, they Their first priority is, of course, safety, but keeping that traffic moving is a huge matter for the California Highway Patrol. And this today, they've got a real road bump in the way, and they are taking care of that as best they can. And you can see them taking them into custody one by one. But again, you got to wonder how are they going to get all these folks off the freeway, even with the extra squad cars that are showing up right now. I don't think that they're going to have enough, even if they put three in a car. I still think they're going to need some more, uh, more units down there to get all the protesters off the freeway. Yeah, it'll take some time for sure, and gosh, I mean, you could imagine why and see why those tempers are flaring from the motorists, you know, a lot of them not knowing what's going on and then being stuck in all of this and then arguing with the protesters as well. But slowly but surely, we are seeing those demonstrators getting processed and CHP trying to open up lanes. But again, who knows when, uh, in terms of when these cars will be able to go through again on the 110. But uh, I guess some motorists are still outside their cars, too, watching this all take place. 
Yeah, they're <laughs> they're watching. They've got a lot of phones out there. So the you know, as you said earlier on, is it getting is it getting the word out there? It definitely is. I'm I'm sure that uh, a lot everybody in this group is going to be talking about it, and you've got that effect where the they're going to tell friends, and their friends are going to tell friends. So it is definitely going to get that message out there. But again, this is not the way to do it. Stopping traffic on the freeway dangerous to begin with, and then we did see, like I said, right before we went live, we did see at least one uh, full-on brawl going on with at least one of the protesters and a driver, and then when those motorcyclists just pushed their way through the crowd, people could have been injured, maybe people have been injured for all we know, but thank goodness it wasn't serious injuries, and again, California Highway Patrol, now they're tasked with this huge task, they've got to take care of all of this, they've got to process all these folks, so they're going to be busy, and again, this is still happening out here in downtown Los Angeles on the 110 freeway south. So I'm reading a little bit more about the protest. Um, as I mentioned, so this looks like it was organized by, um, according to the information we're getting, American Jews holding a protest near downtown LA. Plan is to sing, chant, cease fire now, and no money for war crimes. They also have, which we do see here in that image, uh, a seven foot tall menorah right there in the middle of the freeway. And they, they're basically calling for an end to the ceasefire, demanding that money not be spent and m more people not be killed in the war that's been going on for quite a while now between Israel and <coughs> Hamas. So it's interesting to see this group and this crowd. will I'm sure, learn more about them uh, as time goes on and maybe we get a chance to talk to them. But that is why we see those shirts that they're wearing, the black shirts with the right white lettering that says, not in our name. I, you know, I just, just because I have a little bit of time with both of you, I always have issues with the, you know, the, uh, the verbiage that we use when we talk about these, uh, these protests. Is this a protest? Because protest seems to have a negative connotation. Or is this a rally? When you hear, use the word rally, that sounds a little bit more positive. You just never really know when we arrive on these uh, situations, what, you know, how to put, it, how to really kind of portray the story. And you always want to do it in the most middle of the road type of way and that is not a pun today at all but when you're starting to stop traffic on the freeway you're putting people in danger your 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 group folks are getting in, in danger themselves you don't know how any of these people are going to react you don't know whose car you're sitting in front of some of these folks they might have they, luckily they weren't and luckily nobody was hurt but this could have gone a very different way and somebody could have been badly injured out here again though california highway patrol now stepping in and you can see them taking them into custody one by one they're bringing them over to the cars and I believe that they're going to start shuttling them off of the freeway. And I know, because we've seen some of these in the past, they're not going to let any of this traffic move until they get all these protesters in the, off the freeway and it is safe for the traffic to start moving again. But you can see some of those drivers now making their way back to the... Uh, Back to the uh, back to their cars that are stopped, and I understand. There's look at that. There you go. That's what I thought was going to happen. There's like 22 squad cars down there right now from the California Highway Patrol, and of course, each one of those vehicles, they have their officers in there, and they've got to go and pick up a, a a couple of passengers to bring back to their station. Think about all the manpower involved in this, the resources to yep. respond to a situation like this, and then all the livelihoods of the motorists behind the protesters as well. But clearly, you know, we're talking about it, and a lot of people out there wanting their voices to be heard. But in this way is definitely show stopping and traffic stopping as well. We're seeing that it looks <clears throat> like they got half of the group, right, because they had completely blocked the entire freeway. Um, so they have half of them already taken in and we're waiting to, it's going to take a while. This obviously is going to take a while. Um, but I do want to say that's a good point you bring up regarding the words that we use. I mean, words really do matter, especially when it comes to sensitive topics, uh, topics that are just filled with so much emotion. And maybe, you know, uh, some people do take saying a protester or a protester as something that's of a negative <coughs> connotation. So you could call it a demonstration or demonstrators. Demonstration, but, um, yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. I think the more we cover these types of stories, we realize the people who are associated with uh, whatever is happening or people who have some emotional connection to the story, uh, every word you say can hit someone in a different way. 
Definitely, and you know that that's part of uh, part of our you know our repertoire is and and with uh, with me it's usually breaking news and sometimes the breaking news is something like this and again <laughs> if I agree or disagree with what they're saying and in this case you know what it's clear that uh, anybody that knows me is you know I just don't want to see anybody get hurt I don't want to see any the, you know and but how they present themselves or how they feel that they these folks are taking a, taking part of it you know that's a personal issue. And again, right now they took their personal issue and they did inconvenience so many folks out here today. And some people might say, well, some people are dying. And, you know, but you know what? That's not this person's fault right here. You know, then and, the, and they're being dragged into this. And that is what the issue is today. And a lot of these folks, they're, may, you know, they are stuck in traffic right now. They're going to be late. Hopefully nobody is going to get any kind of serious issues with their job or whatever they need to be. And of course, these protesters, I have a feeling that they're going to take them in, they'll process them, and then they'll just release them. But uh, it, 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 like you said, they definitely got their message out. There's no doubt about it. We're talking about it, and we're seeing what's going on. It looks like they're uh, chanting or perhaps singing, or I see hand clapping, uh, those types of gestures down below from those who are still left over. Um, what time, Stu, just remind me, what time this began? Because we were on the scene pretty quickly, and uh, I know it seems like for the people who are stuck in their cars uh, like an eternity, I, I would say they are moving rather quickly considering what they're dealing with. Well, our crack assignment desk, and I mean that very honestly, got a hold of me right about 9.20. So 9.20 is probably when this this became an, an issue. And uh, we got here pretty quickly, and uh, we got on the air pretty much as soon as we arrived. So this has been going on for well, cl coming up on an hour right now, and I would venture to say it's going to be a solid hour of uh, cl lane closures before they're going to have everything reopened and they have all these folks in their cars. Uh, let's take a peek at what's going on on the uh, northern end of that oh, right boy. there. We're watching some of those cars making those uh, U-turns, <laughs> and they still are. Look at that. Well, we missed that at uh, construction vehicle right there uh, making yeah. a U-turn, and that's another one. That's a, that's a piece of equipment that's probably holding up a job, and a bunch of other people are waiting on it to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. So it has been very inconvenient for a lot of folks, and uh, you can see some of the people even here on the transition roads off of the 101. Mm -hmm. They've already yeah. turned their cars around, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to make those U-turns and get back onto another freeway safely. Again, California Highway Patrol, they've been tasked with this, and I would venture to say they're doing an amazing job keeping the public safe the best they can and taking and getting here as quickly as possible. That was what I was kind of wondering about, why they weren't being more active in the beginning. But at one point, 25 police cars, 25 California Highway Patrol cars, and, of course, officers all here on scene to help take care of these uh, protesters and uh, get them into custody and the freeway reopen. Wow, I saw on another note uh, somebody waving at you, Stu. Um, obviously the motorists aware of the situation by seeing our helicopter up on top and um, this is a way you're celebrating your birthday, <laughs> spending your birthday with newsworthy <laughs> events. We do, uh, have, we do have Chelsea on the way too, Stu, so hopefully when she gets uh, there or anywhere close to mm -hmm. that vicinity, we can get some more information. At this point, we're relying on you, obviously, and uh, the crew up in Skybox to give us these images, and we have some information regarding what <coughs> this was uh, about and who this group is, but I would love to hear more from the actual demonstrators down below. Yeah. Definitely, and and it, like I said, if it if it's positive or if it's negative, the way they presented it is pro is is the issue right now. And you've got a lot of people out here, and uh, and in the beginning there was some tempers were flaring. We did see some fights uh, break out, so it was it was very very tense. And I'm glad it ended very peacefully out here. And uh, you can see these officers are just one by one taking them into custody. You got still got drivers out there in numbers, just kind of watching and waiting and uh, rolling. Uh, rolling tape as it would be that guy out there with the uh, salmon pants and the long hair he's got that nice challenger that, and that's way back there we watched him I watched him as he got out of his car so he's got a long walk to get back to his vehicle and it just kind of shows you how long this is going to be here and how these drivers are handling that situation uh, this morning but again some of them's making those u-turns doing what they can to get out of that pack and it is starting to thin out just a little bit but a lot of folks going to be very in convenience this morning as the freeway still completely shut down and uh, those protesters being taken into custody one by one.
Let's hope nobody is having a medical emergency or I was is thinking missing the same thing, something yeah. that is really, you know, a, of a timely issue. So this is what I think about when you're stuck in something like that with no idea. Nowhere to go. Nowhere yeah. to go, no idea when it will be resolved, no idea when you'll start moving again, and it's a situation you've been in for quite some time now. It, it's the most frustrating thing as a driver, uh, we all know. So. Uh, it's one thing when you're closer to and have a vantage point of what's happening, right? right? You can at least kind of mm -hmm. get a sense of it. But when you're stuck in the far back, like so many of these drivers now at this point on the freeway, at this point maybe they've turned on the radio or they've heard what's happening. But still, when you can't see it, it just mm -hmm. adds to the frustration. And they're not even seeing any flashing lights or anything, so they don't know what's happening uh, in the middle of the pack or in the back. So Looks yeah. like we have just like a dozen or so left of... Um, the demonstrators down below and some of them I noticed uh, the cars pulled over on the shoulder there it looked like those belonged to some of the demonstrators because I saw a couple of them come out of those cars and they sat down so um, I don't know if they're going you know who's gonna move those cars I don't know if they're gonna have them get in the car and move it or a CHP officer might have to jump in and move those vehicles but maybe that you know now I'm just thinking to myself I was saying how did they even attempt this how do they go about this but perhaps the cars in the front with some of the demonstrators in, slowed down, mm -hmm. and that's what started uh, started this pro, uh, this demonstration. They slowed down, they got out, they were able to block traffic, and maybe that's how they were able to get on the freeway because it is not easy to get on this freeway. The 110 is busy; it's in the morning. Mm -hmm. There's no real opportunity to organize something like this unless that's how they did it. Yeah. I'd it, I, I venture to say that is how they did it. I would. They probably were uh, other p other people that are part of this group that were doing just that. They all got together, kind of drove, synchronized their driving, and then just kind of slowed yeah. down and started letting people out of their vehicles, and that's how that traffic stopped. As far as that one vehicle over here to the side, that gray Prius, that I would venture to say, you're right, either they made it talk to the uh, driver and said, you know, we're just going to leave your keys in there so we can move it off the freeway, and or they're going to have to... Uh, get that towed, but you you can see some of the chanting as the last of them are, are waiting to uh, get the uh, plastic handcuffs and being taken into custody. But again, this is uh, th this is the best ending for this, is that everybody's just being taken into custody, nobody's been hurt or injured, and hopefully they'll have that freeway reopened here shortly. And, and as you pan over, um, you know, we want to show the patrol cars down below because um, people are wondering, well, where are they taking them? They're walking them back here, and they have a number of vehicles, as you can see. So it looks like, you know, two, three people to a car. Um, they're getting in the car, and then they'll drive off the freeway. We haven't really seen those uh, backup CHP patrol cars move, though, because eventually those will have to move out of the way in order to clear the freeway to allow traffic to pass and the motorists to pass. But look at that, just how many officers have responded in order to make yep. sure those demonstrators are taken to be processed. But uh, earlier, it was quite a different scene. Obviously, we're approaching the end of this. Look at how things unfolded with angry motorists as demonstrators took over the 110. On the right side of your screen, you're seeing footage from earlier as this was all unfolding. And you can see just how tempers were fla flaring. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, th some of those some of those drivers clearly not happy with the, what was going on there and the protesters. I did see when we first arrived here, well, when we first first got here, you saw the, some interaction, but it seemed almost more like some of those uh, drivers they clearly unhappy, but they were still in that verbal stage. And then you can see that it, it escalated at one point where it started turning into some uh, pushing and shoving, and then actual fisticuffs as it would be. Uh, again, I hope. Uh, Nobody was seriously injured, and I also hope that there no, no charges are going to be pressed on either side of that, as this is, you know, something that is one of those things. It, it just happened. But take a look at that. That backup still out here, the California Highway Patrol. They are still here, and they're working to clear that scene. The last of them, let's get the last of them being taken into custody. But like you said, Sandra and Aroxia, they still got to get all those uh, police cars or those CHP vehicles off of the freeway. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a few moments in its 
itself. And I, I would venture to say these officers are not going to allow that traffic to start moving until the freeway is completely clear. We've seen this in the past on just accidents. So they're going to stay here. They're probably going to get some motorcycle officers to uh, just kind of ride up on the front and uh, or maybe a, and or a squad car just to kind of make sure that nobody tries to bum rush the uh, scene until everybody is safely off the freeway. But it is starting to happen out here. More and more of these officers are taking their newly acquired passengers and placing them into their vehicles and then uh, taking them probably to well, probably the uh, CHP Central where they're going to be processed. But again, what a scene this morning for sure. You know, some of the people who were in the way back, they were able to, and I think we have some footage of that, people just reversed and turned around and they were lucky enough to kind of not get stuck in this mess. Uh, but most of the people, obviously, once um, you have a number of cars behind you, you're unable to maneuver. You have nowhere to go. So we're showing that image there to your right there you see people just kind of okay this is my opportunity i'm going to take it reverse and just get out of here um but a lot of people most of those people are not so lucky they had no choice but to get stuck so